All right, so uh, I've given my AI take, including the spiciest version of it, to to fire back at the people who are annoying the shit out of me on Twitter. Uh, where, what, what do you? How, uh, first of all, I guess introduce yourself, plug yourself, et cetera, et cetera, and then uh, I'll let you. Uh, fire the first volley as I don't know what your position is and I can't know what your position is until you tell me. Okay, uh, well, uh, okay, I'm trying to do out of, so, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Rapti. I, I do a lot of art and stuff. I uh, basically, yeah, um, I love AI stuff. This whole thing fascinates me. Um, I actually do have a strike kit. I actually do have a pretty good VA setup. That's the problem, is having a good VA setup causes failure a lot of times. Especially um, with Discord. Discord just doesn't play very well with other audio things. Uh, that's why every time I have a guest on the show for with video, I have to like, you guys don't know this, of course, but I have to change my entire setup anytime I want to have a guest on where we're sending video to each other is because of the way streaming interacts with discord so uh, yeah yeah oh <clears throat> rapti is not a kid no i'm not i'm not, I'm not a kid sorry oh uh, my pronouns are you can just use she her technically i prefer my name but she her is usually much easier okay, okay so you had a bunch of takes and i want to know where you want to focus on because you oh i don't really care it's your call uh you 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 are are getting to determine the direction of this because like i said i'm not familiar with your positions all that much outside of okay. what you told me so um trying to think so i think ultimately we'll say this uh one big thing is that the argument regarding ai art is a lot more nuanced in yeah. because there's oh gosh like you have several different factors like there's one factor which is the in fact you have different programs and websites that do and they each have their own different terms of service mm -hmm. um they have a lot of them use different uh, ai art generation engines uh, a lot of them allow you to scrape art from other artists contemporarily mm -hmm. some don't um in addition you don't just have you know the, the visual art you also have things like uh, ai dungeon ai dungeon 2 oh uh, yeah novel ai which are pretty a cool lot of stuff. like i don't have any problem with uh, stuff like ai i mean i don't i don't have any problem with any of these tools on a basic level i don't really mind if people have fun with them i just i i think that we should i think it benefit it behooves us it benefits us to have a uh a deeper and perhaps more stringent view on art when it comes to uh, like human involvement or or I guess you could even just say intelligent involvement well so I what I understood it seems like maybe uh, and you can tell me if I'm wrong a lot of the core element of the human involvement was out of a concern for a deeper meaning versus society is that right and how what it says about us as people and well, I mean, the... oh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would say that it's it's not like so much. It's not as even so much about a deeper meaning for society, just that I think that's what art is. I think art is a way for us to connect to one another, to generate meaning in a world that is uh, bereft of intrinsic meaning. We create meaning by uh, by processing our experiences and sharing them with one another. And I think meaning is important. I think uh, like it's not just it's not just something it's not something as like as a i don't know what's the right word it's not quite as a vulgar as something like purpose which is used by churches and whatever to be like this is your job and your place and your thing you're supposed to do meaning intentionality is, yeah i mean yeah i mean meaning is like well what is what does this mean to us how do we react to it how do what does it what does it mean to me what is my thought what is my response what is my feelings mm -hmm. about the world that i ex experience that's to me what m why meaning is important right right and meaning and which is actually interesting um so we'll say just art in itself is a two-sided coin i guess all coins have two sides but um one is the intentionality of the artist the other is the how the audience receives it um sure. and it, you know it's kind of the synthesis between the two that defines things now, I uh, 
how do I put this? I agree that it is important for people to be able to creatively express themselves. I honestly feel that that's never going to go away. People always express themselves creatively in, in some fashion. Now, and people um, will say this because I know during your more angry part, you mentioned, actually, I'll, sorry, I'll touch on this because this is the cool spicy stuff. Because um, you mentioned Americans have a kind of impoverished view of art. We're not very, in general, we just like shiny things. And uh, even without getting a deeper meaning and purpose between or behind it, um, is, is that right? You were, do you stand behind that? Yeah, I think that I think that I think that by and large, and obviously, uh, I don't put like an incredible amount of stock into like a broad proclamation of what and what determines an American and all that. But I mean, uh, mm -hmm. there is there is at least some stark entity that is American culture to some degree, and I think in most aspects of it, in most of the the most identifiable aspects of American culture, we do have a poverty of art. What we are what we are able to experience and enjoy is uh, is diminished. It is it is very uh, it is very um, um, uh, what's the right word? A con it's like a conveyor belt art. We a lot of our art is per is created for the purpose of profit. It has the minimum amount of like artistic ingredients that it becomes palatable, and then it is spit out to be consumed and be forgotten about. Uh, and mostly just to churn out advertisement revenue and to make money from from you know toys or whatever whatever tie-ins that you have, and then mostly to be just disregarded and 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 treated with uh, treated as a commodity to be fully exploited to the maximum and then thrown away. And I think that this is like obviously these arguments can be made pretty solidly about like pop culture. Um, and I think that there's always an aspect of that that like mass media has ha is a certain level by, by the nature for something to go to the position of mass media. It has to be digestible and palatable on a large enough level, which inherently sort of like shall makes the art a little bit shallower. It's very hard uh, to find true universi universality. But I just think I... that in general, Americans have been for generations sort of... Um, given very little things of substance and a abundance of things that that are uh basically vehicles for a product and have very little else in there and keep in mind that there is another aspect of these that i'm not really touching on which is the the raw exploitation aspect like i mean oh right yeah capitalism yeah, etc but, but i've talked about that a thousand times and we that, don't really have to go on about that um, like i i think yeah. everyone is on agreement there yeah so if if i may uh because there's yeah. like well there's Two points I can make. One is the fact that uh, we love, I mean, we're at an artistic expression level more than ever. Um, that get in, uh, for, sorry, let me rephrase that. You have a bottom up expression level, which, as cringe as it might be, things like TikTok and such, you have people wanting to be seen and expressing themselves. Sure. Uh, but then, more, I think, cogently to this argument, though, is we have the bottom, top down level. Now, I think labeling it all as kind of like soulless and such does a disservice to the, the people specifically and i'll give some examples um some of the most popular things lately well first off uh you had uh but lil nas x for example is one of the most popular musical artists in the world um and he pushed a lot of boundaries with a lot of his music um you know broke a lot of barriers you have things like uh, Sandman, which is freaking incredible. Um, yeah, by Netflix, you know, but Neil Gaiman managed to have a lot of creative control and expression, and that show really hits people hard. You have Tuca and Birdie, which got canceled by Netflix, but out of uh, whether from corporate greed or whatever, or just wanting to see it done, you know, it got picked up by Adult Swim. That's another incredible show. Sure. Um, and I think the biggest counterpoint to the um, disinterest that pe uh, people have towards art is in, well, are you aware of what the biggest Kickstarter project of all time is? The biggest of all time? Oh, I have no idea mm -hmm. of all time. Is it Shenmue? 
I don't know. Uh, no. Uh, Brandon Wasn't Sanderson. Wasn't that previously the one? Uh, I think it was something else. Brandon Sanderson did a Kickstarter for, uh, you know, extremely popular fantasy author. Yeah, I know. I know um, he ran saying. a... Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, he he ran a, a surprise Kickstarter to fund four books coming out next year. Um, my understanding, well, it raised forty-one million dollars, and it has a hundred and eighty-five thousand backers. Um, awesome. It's I think double the records of the previous ones. So, and everyone putting it out, like everyone was shocked because it's like, oh, the thing that people are most interested aren't tech gadgets it's not video games it's reading it's a desire to have that escape to have that medium and i think ultimately like people you know are busy they don't have a lot of time to read but still you know they'll make time for these things so there's that craving um, yeah people i agree, I, agree. Just, I don't i don't think uh, there's not a craving sorry. i just think that like uh like, I don't think there's not a craving for great things. Obviously, there is there is great art being made right now. I mean, fuck. I, I, I think, tw like, 2019, like, three of my favorite games of all time came out in 2019. I think they're pretty impressive. I'm not saying there isn't good art being made right now. But what I'm saying is that there is an... Inc that throughout... Th not, not just now, but throughout all of history, and uh, there has been a uh, an attempt to... Uh, to I don't know, take control of art, to control art via either, whether via larger economic systems, say, hey, you will literally never have the access to see or digest art of any meaning, like of any, uh, like, le a greater level than what you can, uh, you know, see at your, in your, in your town or whatever. Uh, not that those are not valid, but it's a, it's a, a very limited exposure uh, to now where we have uh, uh, the creation of, of, uh, massive million 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 uh uh dollar uh projects that that are ultimately created by not not like the individual creatives involved have little to no say there was a handful of decision makers at the top who ultimately get to decide what is going to be made and if you don't make that thing uh, even if you infuse it with as much creativity as you possibly can if you don't make that thing you're going to starve so i i don't know that it's really like i don't think that like it's like genetically bound into Americans. I just think that, yes, Americans, ob there are obviously a very lot of people, there are a ton of people who are very excited about uh, about artistic projects and there are great artistic projects that are happening, but um, those things are, are increasingly uh, successfully crowded out uh, and harder to actually sustainably create because of the mechanisms that are being controlled by corporations, that are being controlled and influenced by uh, by ultimately art that has very little substance. And it's not that like I think there's something intrinsically wrong with Star Wars, or that I think like you're bad if you like Star Wars. I just think that like Star Wars, especially in its modern form, is like a great example of something where it is almost an accident if there is an art, as if there is a true artistic expression. And in fact, like. That Disney seems to breaking want to bad. control every Sorry. aspect of that. Yeah. No, Breaking Bad was fantastic. If that was big. Oh God, Breaking Bad, a bit of salt. Sorry. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I. So, oh, I was going to say something. Sorry, ADHD is fun. Um, okay. There's a point there. So, oh, like. Trying to think here. Sorry, I got a. So yes, things get crowded up, but like, I'll say this because a lot of it is, you know, the dystopian view of the al almighty algorithms, which are, the, I think, algorithms ultimately are like the best or the most purest expression of capitalism. Um, but here's the thing. Yes, like, we'll say this. A lot of like animation on YouTube, for example, animation kind of died out because of the algorithm. Yet, despite that, there are things through sheer popularity in terms of like interest that rise above it. Uh, specifically, Hell of a Boss, which hits number one on trending anytime there's a new episode. And it is 
as against YouTube's algorithm as you could possibly think, but there's enough interest and passion in it that it can surpass that. And I think um, it's important maybe is to tap into that that passion and use that to elevate art, you know. Um, and I think even turn the wrap it around to the AI generated art thing. Uh, to do, mention something in chat, uh, AI art ripping, uh, copying from existing contemporary artists, I think is wrong, should not happen. Um, I know some of the, yeah, some of the websites again, allow you to type an artist's name that's living and copy their style specifically. And that's, that's not cool. Uh, whether or not that's art, isn't germane to me or relevant. It's more that it's, I think, ethically not not a cool thing to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I try to separate, and yeah. I tried to do that even today, separate the portions of my argument, uh, you know, from, uh, because obviously it's a different argument to say, uh, yeah, AI art is stealing from people, because I think it is, and I think it's disgusting in the way that it does. Uh, I do think that there are aspects of the way AI art works that will uh, most likely always lead to some level of just like, uh, um, of, of like theft in that way. But I don't think that it's like uh, an un, it's not something that I don't think can be uh, like, like that, that can't be overcome. I do think, it, I do think that you could probably create tools that don't uh, do that to the same degree. Um, but uh, yeah, but but yeah, I try to keep that separate from my main problems with AI art, which is that which is in the in is the fact that the, like AI art lacks context, it lacks direct intentionality, it only has the intention from the original prompt to which the art itself is only a response to a prompt from a thinking agent. Um, yeah, so yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that one is a bit. I, I can address that, um, but since that's a bit more uh, subjective, I think it. For me, I think uh, I'm trying to kind of lay some of the groundwork. I, I guess that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Uh, so to we'll say this, I'm, and because I, I know these are some concerns that come up. Uh, uh, I know there is a concern about it replacing artists themselves. Uh, when it comes to like commissions, I know there's a lot of artists who are worried that, you know, uh, instead of being commissioned, that corporations will just use the soulless, yeah. et cetera, you know, machine. Um, I think that's actually, well, that's an understandable fear. I think it's misplaced because we'll say corporations that are lazy enough to just do an algorithm are the kind of ones that won't be worth working for anyways. Um, and art i mean you say that now but i i think we're i think we're you know a hop skip and a jump away from you know disney uh typing into a a, a an advanced algorithm lion king but real life and then just making a few tweaks you know what i mean that's like kind I, of what I, they've I, done but yeah yeah but i mean they do um, but that's the thing that's why i use the analogy i use yeah. the little the like little analogy of the um of the of the like trapping somebody in a pit and forcing them to make art for you. Are you an artist if you do that? And like, I mean, well, yeah. So it, but, yeah. it's more that I think so. With, in terms of replacing artists, thing um, because the art generators uh, can ultimately only re like much like how our dreams work, they can only really remix existing aspects. They can't completely generate new things. Um, what happens is when somebody like if a company will say like was it to the coast or furry clients for example or whatever want art they want something specific they have like you know art directors they have a vision they have a lot of requirements that can't be met by an ai algorithm it's just not possible to create some you know it so i think Again, also this, yeah, artists, as an artist, I understand, yeah, there's like any time there's anything that could potentially jeopardize art work in any way, it makes a lot of people freak out, right? Which, yeah, again, I understand. But taking a step back, I don't know how many, like if, how do I put this? 
I'm curious to see how many artists actually lose clients because of that. Um, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know that it'll be like a matter of a of like artists losing clients. I think we're just going to come to a point like uh, like we have with writing, where um, where in, if you are not like a a, a, a an existing like best selling author, you have no shot in hell of ever making your living doing writing. Sure, you can always write on your own and maybe some people will even see it but uh the likelihood that you'll be able to actually make a living off that i think will become essentially impossible um as it stands right now like the like people who write yeah for you know a, living, a lot about writing yeah like writing is like i mean i did i i was i wrote freelance full time for like four or five years uh let's see it would have been late it would have been early 2016 into uh into until 2020 so yeah about four and a half years or so you so see the about folding four ideas video um the, the I, folding I ideas video on that will hit very hard real hard um because it's about writing uh ultimately it's really good yeah. but yeah, yeah it's almost, um so yeah. so um i have a lot of i have a lot of friends connections with like professional professional art industry people um, like who do, you know, work for major clients. And even at that level, you cannot make a living out of art alone. You always have to get a side job. Um, the only, so in terms of like being an artist, you have a couple of paths, okay? It's like, here's a subclasses or whatever. You can go into like bizarre quote mainstream eccentric art stuff with like art installations and make money that way you can go quote professional you know and work for big clients part you know on contract still and have to have a part-time job still you can work as like you can work as a concept artist full-time at that point you're just you're you're churning out art as of you know 40 hours a week or this is legit you can become like a fandom or furry artist who makes much more money than the other categories uh like okay. and but uh, so here's what i would here's what i would say about this, that yeah like, you can from a fandom perspective you can make a lot more well Okay, so there's two things I want to say about this. So first off is I don't like I said, I don't think that it's ever going to be like, oh, I was going to go get a commission, but then uh, I did I had an AI do it instead. I do think that probably does happen, but I don't think there's any way to quantify that. I think instead what we will have is that we have a two front war going on, which is that art is continually being devalued. When you have a bunch of AIs kicking around that can, you know, steal art or not steal art, let's pretend they don't. They all do steal art, but let's pretend that they don't. Uh, if they don't steal art, you have a tool that can basically fulfill all of the, the basic needs for, for an artist. And the only, the only people who then end up being able to remain artists are people who have reached, already reached the level of prominence as like a Brandon Sanderson or people who have been chosen by a corporation because it, it's it's above the scope of what a computer can do a la like R.A. Salvatore who does all of like the Star Wars or a ton of the Star Wars novels or, or the D&D &D novels where it's like this is our chosen writer we know this guy will do what we want he can orchestrate a storyline across multiple books like an AI can't but instead what you have with all these AIs is them replacing everyday needs for art our lives are fucking packed with art in fact i think most people if they actually took oh, time mean, to like think graphic about it, design and such not just graphic right. yeah graphic design i'm talking everything you walk outside you see graphic design all over shit you see uh custom art on people's bumper stickers and t-shirts you see custom art on the covers of magazines and booklets and bu and uh and postcards and all kinds of stuff um and there's all these different needs for art to make our world colorful and like capable of being lived in and I think that this is um, like as common now as it's always been. I, in fact, I think there's almost more of a, of a of a desire for like small bits of art. 
um, than there ever mm -hmm. has been. Because like, for example, like the reason why people make so much money online selling stickers and shit is because, well, people live in a world that increasingly looks exactly the same everywhere you go. This is especially true, of course, I'm in America, I talk about America, it's especially true in America. Every town has your Target, your McDonald's, your blah, blah, blah. And, um, and people want to make their spaces unique. Everybody has the same like five models of car. You wanna put stickers on your bumper sticker. You wanna put stickers on the inside. Everybody has the same basic uh, iterations of backpacks and clothings all bought from Costco and Walmart and whatever. People wanna spruce it up. So there's a lot of work for artists to be doing these things. Now, of course, that, art, that work has all been gigified, which means that the artists are on a razor thin margin and what happens is, and also that means that costs are always a little more than the average also gigified person can even, uh, uh, can even like, um, you know, afford. Uh, but when you have tools that can simply steal the abundance of existing art and turn it into something on demand, then all of a sudden, people don't ever feel the need to go look for a sticker to buy from an actual artist or, uh, you know, commission something. Instead, there will just be a sea change, a passive change in uh, everyday things that people currently lean on to make their lives worth living will simply re be replaced with machine simulacra. And over a long enough time, you that I think that that would lead to a death spiral uh, in style, which is horrifying to think about—a world in which even all, even all of our, our what our, you know, what we cling to for artistic expression and 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 spice in our lives now could become just as banal as like a McDonald's cup. Um, but I think that that's a very realistic outcome. That you, instead of instead of it just being like, oh, I lost a commission because somebody went to AI art. Instead, it will be like, well, no one buys stickers anymore because Redbubble has an AI that can instantly spin up uh, your favorite product in you know sticker of whatever type you want. And then there's just no need well, for anybody to buy at that. that point. What's that? Yeah, like if you're take if well, it doesn't so need to be. It doesn't have are... to be theft. That's the thing. Wh who's to say it's it's theft if the if it's de if if AI art is determined as art? Well, they're just do remixing. They're just well, whatever. You can still, if I were to take some, but like okay, so this is actually because copyrights uh, really interesting part of this. So people buy stickers and stuff of brands and things that they like. Um, Not just know, brands, like yeah. Yeah, like characters and shows and things that, you know, they want to support that. People commission things of stuff they like, uh, with or without titties, no, or their own characters and things. Those aren't things that can be replaced by an AI. Like, again, if I want, like, for example, I, on my purse, I have it covered in, like, hell of a boss pins and everything. There wouldn't be an AI that could really successfully generate that and even if there was something that tried to come close it would be oh i don't think like, that's true at all copyright what if, what it if would be Hell copyright of a theft okay but but real quick let me give you an alternative what if tomorrow hell of a boss gets bought by disney and then disney purchases an ai that they feed all of the uh, all of their art that they own they, like, they now own the art to hell of a boss they own the art to every, you know mickey mouse blah 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 they take they take the ai they put all of their images into it and then they create a website a web front that lets people say uh mickey mouse uh, type in your favorite Disney words and we can get whatever you want. And maybe they would have the AI generate some successful models and they would select those models and sell them. I think it would be very easy. And I think this would, I think we can see that this has already happened once by the like the, the, the uh, studio and committee model of making movies that is taken over. That is what most big, uh, most movies that are, that make the most money that are seen by the most people. Those are all movies that are made in a, in a automated assembly line fashion, just like this, I think it would be very easy for Disney to purchase a uh, an art an art AI, tweak it just enough so that it makes the Mickey Mouse's look good, and then l run a website where all of their all of their uh, uh, all of their series and whatever are just on there, and they never have to hire an artist again because it's just plugging in stuff that they already own to, to yeah, generate to, new versions. I mean, arguably they do this be able already. To make right? anything new though is the thing. Well, but but so what? Then they'll just wait That's for somebody. The then they'll just wait for somebody to make something new and then buy them out, as they do right now. Every single time something new is made now, it gets bought up by Disney. They already do that. They already do that for the reason, and the reason that they do that is because the the uh, 
the ecosystem, the atmosphere, the is is already so impoverished that uh, the the line, the like, the margin for being able to survive while making creative pursuits is so tight that uh, you can't that people don't have any choice, and they usually literally have no choice. They just have to sell their shit because it's either they can't keep making art at a sustainable rate uh or the uh, and and therefore eventually they stop making it and then it, they are like well i don't make this anymore i'll sell it to disney or disney walks up and says we will give you a billion dollars you will never have to think about eating ever again if you give us your new product and then they just plug it into their algorithm they already do this they do this right they now they are then there wouldn't be any like if they so we'll say this they, if they stopped being able to make art because they couldn't make a living, then there'd be no art, new art for them regardless. So yeah, the fundamental and so then what you'll then what you'll have then what you'll have yeah. is you will have Walt Disney funded exactly. You will have exactly what happens with uh, well Disney already does this in this way, but you will have what happens with tech companies where tech companies will found incubators. Basically, they will have they will make a, a, a you know an art an art collective. And then they will hire people there and they will say, hey, we'll give you a, a steady wage and you give us your art in exchange. And so then they will simply yeah. just directly commission something new to immediately feed into their AI. And while and but this also goes to the point that the AIs can't generate anything new. So why do we right. we wouldn't we shouldn't consider we shouldn't consider that art. It's it's not it's not we, we need it's, humans to make art. Yeah, it's a I think ultimately the thing is it's a novelty um the these aren't like the ai art thing okay aside from the thing done by open ai who are assholes um uh, with their gpt3 stuff sorry uh, most of the algorithms and everything that are used to make these arts are you know they're yeah they're done by people who are trying to make new cool like cool toys now yes a lot of times they can get bought, bought by corporations but the the corporations that do that Oh, how do I put this? It's, um, I'm trying to think here. So the novelty is the point in a way. Like, I don't see this as becoming a big new thing um, because it, doesn't scratch that itch that people want you know people want new stuff now like yeah isn't like, that a concession and, then to, to my point hmm? that ai art ultimately lacks something that makes it art it's an interesting toy it's an interesting tool but it clearly doesn't satisfy something and so we shouldn't pretend that it does we should just oh, yeah. say hey this is an interesting tool that you can use because if it's true which i think it is i think that ai art like like for, I should say something. Uh, AI art can be used as a part of a greater piece of art. Like I know that like people yeah. brought up, some people in the comments said like, oh, sometimes I use AI art to like spin up a a concept for a D and D campaign that I'm that I'm putting a part of. And all right, that's pretty. That's a pretty innocuous use. You don't really have the funds or the time or whatever. Although I will note that a lot of people, a lot of small artists on the internet make money off of doing D and D commissions and whatever. But Let's not go there for not ignoring yeah. that. Ignoring that. Okay, having a little AI that you can type something in to enhance the art that you've already written and that you're sharing with somebody else, that's pretty fine. But the art in and of itself does not have enough. There's not enough substance to it for us to call it art, so we shouldn't. Or at least it, it, it doesn't satisfy us, so we shouldn't call it that. We shouldn't try to fool ourselves, or we shouldn't buy into people who are trying to fool us. You know what I mean? So, so in that case, so we have two different things here. Yeah. So on the one hand, is the concern that it will replace art, or is your concern that it's not art, you know, from a philosophical level, so therefore we don't have to worry about it? It oh, seems like uh, you're coming at two two points here. And so no, I think I think it's both. And the reason why I say that is because I think that it is not art and it is not satisfying. However, if there is nothing else, if nothing else is permitted to exist. Uh, which, by the way, that is the way that capitalism operates. 
uh, like we've seen that over and over again. The reason why uh, there's only like, like the reason why monocropping it has taken over the entirety of 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 America, for example, the breadbasket is all monocropped. It's not because uh, you know corn is the only crop that grows well in the in the Midwest or the only crop that that people want. It's because all of the farms were bought up by massive agribusiness corporations and for whom it is profitable to only grow corn. And so people don't have a choice anymore because the actual, the, the, the space and the time, the material aspects of it have been captured by, uh, by a capitalistic state slash economy uh, <laughs> abomination. Some would call it a Leviathan. Um, so I can, and I, I think the same thing would ha is going to happen with art. I think that art, that AI art is extremely emotionally bereft. It is a, it is at best a elementary part of something bigger that can be used to make something bigger. But I think that because of its ease of, uh, its, its uh, techno technological efficiency and its ease of use, quote unquote, that, that we will continually see the powers that be, the ones that are currently controlling the materials, the resources, et cetera, we will see them use that to replace the need for, um, for any other type of art. And that type of art will be pushed onto the margins where it can be successfully controlled by those corporations. I don't think that there will ever be a time in human history where no genuine art will exist. I think that literally, I mean, I know for a fact because there are, of course, outsider artists like, you know, like, uh, fuck, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. I, I literally can't think of his name. The guy who made like an entire fantasy universe over the course of his life and never told a soul about it. And only after he died was it discovered. I, I can't fucking remember his name. Um, anyway, outsider artists exist. So, there will always be people making art for their own purposes. But what we will see is we will see it become more and uh, rarer and rarer to be able to find that over time. Anything that is the only things that will exist are those which are palatable to the machine and they will be immediately bought up or immediately wrested from the control of the artist and there will be nothing that artist can do. The creator so, will die and the machine will continue. So I will say this, because that's, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. This actually, Oh gosh, I have to resist the temptation to have this take this into a tangent on a really spicy take. Um, but I feel, as has been demonstrated for years and years and years and years and years now, we have we're in an era where there are more independent expressions of art than like ever before. Look at so we'll say this: the one of the best examples, I would argue, of uh, what is it? Uh, it's Steph Sterling calls it a uh, quadruple capitalism or whatever, you know, with the big yeah. monolithic game companies, right? Producing, mm -hmm. churning out the same thing year after year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the indie game scene is flourishing. Like, okay, it's but because the people indie, are wanting okay, that. That is not true, though. I, I, I understand mm -hmm. where you're coming from in saying that there's lots of, there's been lots of really cool indie games, but the indie game scene is not flourishing. The indie game scene, the great indie games have come only out of pure human stubbornness. Uh, and in fact, even the, what I consider to be the crowning achievement of the indie game world, Pathologic 2, which was created with, with, oh, which, right. with, no, which is, which is created, which was <laughs> created by a team of 25 people um, they lost almost the entire team because in order to make Pathologic 2 happen in the current economic time, uh, 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 um, you know, in the ter current economic um, environment, uh, what, ha what, what, what was required was an unbearable amount of crunch and it literally killed the studio. And now we might never yeah, see the, the rest of Pathologic 2 because that was the, but that was the oh, only no. way that that could even occur. The game simply <laughs> would not have been, would not have launched. They would not have had money to complete it. They had to do horrible things. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of people suffered as a result of it. Um, yeah, I, there are there are a lot of good indie games. There are a lot of really amazing indie games. Um, uh, Larian some, Studios is one of the best success stories, I think, because they had to do a lot of trash games to get enough funding to get Divinity Original Sin done, which Divinity Original Sin 2 is now its own thing. Uh, the biggest success story I'd say in indie gaming, though, um, I would say is Warframe, which be, even though it's free to play and... Um, is like ex extremely ethical um it's been around for what 10 years now and has an, a huge player base yeah through stubbornness but like they don't they don't have to do crunch 
they give vacation time, etc. Um, I know. Do you, also do you know? That, do you know who owns uh, Digital Extremes? Uh, they're not owned. Uh, Tencent yes, has a are. part stake in it, but it's not a controlling share, and they have no creative control over DE. That one I know. Um, I actually looked at the, the info, like the actual contract, whatever. Uh, I, I, on that I, one I don't. I, was I don't. I think that like I think that Warframe. Uh, so wow, there's a lot I could say about Warframe. I've put thousands of hours into Warframe. Um, <laughs> Ivara uh, is my best care. I love Ivara. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, Ivara is amazing. Uh, also, uh, I I went ham on Ivara, but yes, uh, invis <laughs> invisi fishing um, and yes. invisi 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 animal catching. But uh, yes, it is ten cent. Um, the ten cent investment is unbelievable, and that is a very rare thing. But this is an example, by the way, of what I was talking about before, which is what will happen: is that mega corporations will buy, will create art communes where a handful of like five people will be able to live in in, in functional paradise as long as they're willing to give uh, give their their blood directly to the machine to exploit and sell battle passes and platinum on. And uh, while I will agree that probably the work environment at Digital Extremes is probably better than most any others, I do not think that the product is uh, is something that like, uh, I would, like I, I have a lot of issues with Warframe. Despite the fact that there's a lot that I love about Warframe, there's also a, a fucking lot to hate. And a lot of the, sh the shit that, um, that like uh, even people like James Stephanie Serling, um, like, uh, 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 talks about like those are um, like those aspects are in that game and uh, it, while it's free to play it's more like free to grind for th 30,000 for 30 hour for 30,000 hours before you fucking actually can get anywhere most of that game and I know this because I played the it's platinum Disney, market it's about to get interesting don't worry sorry yeah um, no like uh, like uh, it, it's it's a game where I, I played the platinum market. I was able to buy the new things when they came out, and I know how many people keep that game's economy going by dumping raw cash into it. Um, okay. Like, so I don't think it's a good example. Like, uh, unfortunately, okay. I think it's actually an example better of like, yeah. Sorry, better example would be Super Giant. Uh, they released extremely successful games, and they have they don't ever crunch, and they have mandatory vacation time. And they're a very small studio. Um, okay, but how many can... how many super giants exist, and how many uh, uh, and and how many ver how many of everything else uh, uh, so, exists? Yeah, here's where we get super spicy. So, not enough. And, in fact, there is one giant corporation that's well, it's one person who owns a corporation that's changing that, which is. Tim Sweeney with Epic Studios, which yes, it has a lot of ethical concerns with how they, with consumer exploitation, whatever. But Tim Sweeney himself is a, uh, I think he's, his whole thing is he wants to take uh, power, vertical power, and distribute it horizontally so that indie devs can more successfully flourish. Um, that's why Epic gives a lot of, uh, they'll just straight up give money to studios that are starting without needing an exclusivity thing they're um, buying them they're doing what i said about disney they're oh no no disney not, not even not even buying them necessarily uh they well so they're not so first off there's the one level where they can get exclusive exclusivity which just basically means don't put your game on steam um and a studio will get a huge amount of cash they also though with no strings attached will they have grants will they'll just give indie studios uh games They've made a lot of their tools free to undercut competition, like they made Unreal Engine free because Unity was being an asshole. Um, essentially, Tim's... Sorry, I have a whole thing with Epic because they've actually... They're doing capitalism, quote, wrong by using their money to try to crush monopolies because Tim Sweeney has a lot of... Um, he's like Ozymandias from... I just, uh, I, I don't, Watchmen, I don't know that anyway, this is sorry, a, that's a tangent. It, it's a bit Got of a it. tangent. I also don't know that it like is a sustainable model and uh, we'll see, I guess, in a few years what happens. Uh, I feel like every uh, uh, upstart billionaire starting a new empire always sells their new empire as this time it's the good one. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, but I, I don't really look at Epic and think of um, like a, 
flourishing indie wonderland. I see a, a kingmaker. I see a corporation that's sitting on a mountain of gold uh, that, it, that it has gotten through uh, cutthroat business tactics uh, then being able to, to king make at their own leisure. And to me, that is the opposite of like what we, of what, of the argument you were making before, which is that like we see like an unprecedented uh, amount of, of art. I don't think we see an unprecedented amount of like new and amazing art these days. I think that um, there's an unprecedented amount of people connected to one another because of things like the internet and because of things like, uh, you know, phones and 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 global cellular connections i think there's a an uptick in how many people are connected and that means there's a numerical uptick in the amount of amazing art that we can come across if you have if you are suddenly connected to the entire world you can your the chance that you're going to be able to find something incredible goes up i mean for example i don't think there's a chance in hell that unless i learned russian um, that I would have ever been able to play Pathologic if it came, uh, Pathologic 2, if Pathologic 2 had came out 20 years before, uh, you know, if the technology existed, it existed at a certain point, I don't think I ever would have been able to play it because 20 years ago, the ability for people to network across the world was not at the degree that it was. Now we do have global networking, but I don't think that means that we actually have like a per capita increase in people's ability to express artistically. And I certainly don't think that it means that we have a per capita increase in the ability for people to like sustainably make art. In fact, I think right now, uh, most of what we've talked about has been how it's actually Im increasingly impossible to make your living as an artist, even though there's a greater hunger for art than ever before because of the way that that our that our that the economy is leveraged because of the way that IP is controlled and powered and the way that the means of production are controlled um, with regard to art the reality is is that uh, to me it seems like we've connected all of the billion people on earth and now we have a hundred great works of great of uh, of art where before we may have only had 10 so we the connections that were possible went up by by you know millions, millions upon millions of billions, incomprehensible numbers of new connections have been formed by people going online, but we've only really seen an expan a small expansion of the potential art. I would love a world in which m there is so much art that everywhere we turn, there is an abundance of, 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 of creativity. And I know that the world can do that because we've done it for all of our history. We are even doing it now. It's just that nobody can actually survive doing it. And so a lot of it stops or is smothered in the cradle or is bought up by mega corporations and turned into trash. We'll say this now, well, just from a very simple perspective, I guess, uh, we'll go with furry art. Right now there's more furry art than there was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. That's a lot of artists and oh. the population. So like that's, and, and that wouldn't have been made possible without the internet and everything. Great. That's a lot of people making more of a living than they would have been able to otherwise. Like it's people getting Great. away from or helping at least escape a bit of wage slavery, um, being able to make more of an ethical uh, business model by doing that kind of thing. And I understand that the fear then comes from AI taking that away, but what has made things like furry art flourish are the very things that AI could not replicate. For now. The the luck, I this, is, this is furry art right now. I'm going to borrow and I'm going to go like, I'm going to be uh, uh, at the risk of being slightly offensive. This is an analogy. Please don't, uh, don't, uh, don't, don't take this further than the analogy I'm doing. But a, a furry art is currently like a country that hasn't yet been colonized. It's sitting there going, well, we have our little paradise, you know, we'll never go the way of another country that's been colonized because, you know, it's because currently furry art is uh, is uh, illegible. It's not like people, uh, the corporate people don't understand furry art, but the moment you get the first furry fucking CEO, you God, you better goddamn know that furry CEO is gonna, gonna uh, if they happen to be a tech CEO and interested in making money off of this shit, they're gonna do that. They're gonna figure out what it is that makes the furries tails wag and then they're gonna go okay now we have an ai or we can buy we can hire 15 artists and we can mass produce art that will get everybody's tail wagging and then all of the all of a sudden 20 years from now all of the furries will be sitting there going damn i just i just it just doesn't feel good anymore i don't know what it is just well, like every other like, art has had to experience yeah uh, this i mean yes there has been the furry tech ceo i'm 
you know, Varka with sure. Bad Dragon. Uh, um, sure, who sure. also owns uh, they also own E621 and a few other sites, but uh, there's still it's uh, how do I put it? Because uh, yeah, Varka is a complicated person. Um, e, I'd say E621 at the very least um, has become a big place for sharing art. They've actually over time they've become a lot more artist friendly. Um, and it's a way for a lot of people to have their art discovered, um, even though it has been part of the corporateness. Um, I don't, sorry. and also a lot of studios now are realizing that furry artists have a lot of skill and mm -hmm. furry artists get hired to do things and work for bigger studios, etc. cetera, um, which unfortunately is a pay cut most of the time, mm -hmm. but like, the in terms of just like economics, furry artists, and also when I'm saying furry artists, by the way, I also mean other like fantasy personal artists, you know, like all the other illustrator or creative things. Just furry art is an easy umbrella for me. Um, I don't know. It's I guess I'm a lot more optimistic ultimately oh. about things. Um, I've seen a lot of crap happen. I've, you know, we are you and I are like about the same age, so we've seen some shit go down. But I think, yeah, I look at the future being much brighter. Um, and 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 yeah, Pants, I was gonna say, yeah, Bad Dragon's pretty controversial. Uh, that is not an argument to get into. I'm yeah, so that's a long conversation. To, yeah, I I am too personally biased uh, for that one. I. Well, quick stories. I was hanging out with Varka in the hotel room when he kind of decided to come up with the whole thing. Um, he was literally perched on, like, he's sitting in a chair with a wine glass, and, like, we're in the top of the hotel. He was, like, looking out at the city of San Jose like an evil fucking villain when we were discussing the bad dragon. It was hilarious and also kind of ominous. Uh, but, yeah, I have, I have personal involvement with a lot of stuff. But um, for those who are not in, under... Who don't know what bad dragon is don't worry you're not missing anything um let's see oh so babylon uh for me optimism is a survival mechanism i cannot afford to be pessimistic uh i really don't have not to not to sound condescending but i don't really have a, a luxury of pessimism if that makes sense to people well, i think that um, makes sense uh, I I don't really uh, I don't really categorize myself as an optimist or a pessimist. I just to me I look at the 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 operation of current AI and it's not AI but current you know uh, uh, algorithmic image generation or computer image generation and I I see uh, the I I can see the glowing eyes of Walt Disney like hovering behind it. It looks to me. Like it is it almost, almost, I mean, I don't know. I've never really taken the time to go look in who is actually funding these companies. But even if none of them are funded by Disney, there's nothing stopping Walt Disney from re recognizing, oh my God, we have an infinite money printing machine uh, by letting people literally type in their, their, their dreams and fantasies, just like magic Walt Disney World. And, you know, they'll get whatever out and we own it and it will produce things that we own. And uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I think that- It's actually like, worse I, than that right now. Open AI is actually, open AI is people who did, who hold the keys to the most advanced art algorithm are uh, extremely puritanical, more so than even Disney is. Interesting. And it's kind of shitty. So it's, yeah. Like it's in so, that situation kind of already, but yeah. And and so this comes to the point where uh where like this is why I'm very open about like hey all art is subjective. This is my opinion on it. Uh, I mm -hmm. and I urge people to taste deeper of the world, to live a life with more meaning, to taste things deeper than a Funko Pop, and to taste things deeper than an AI generated like jingle key jingling. Like, yes, I do agree that there are some types of AI art that are more, you know, involved and more interesting than others. But I think that AI art is a cheap alternative to what people really crave, which is 
they want something that's unique and special that touches them. And you know what they should do? They should take us take 10 minutes and go browse Fur Affinity and find an artist who can draw that cool thing that they were going to type into the AI art thing. And then they'll spend $10. And sure, it's not free. It was $10, you know, to have a sketch done or $15 to have your sec to have a, a slightly detailed sketch done or $100 to have a, a, a basic drawing done or $200 to have a nice one done. But what you'll walk away with is something $600. deeply satisfying, something that... I or six hundred dollars, whatever your price your price rate is, I don't really care. Yeah. Like, uh, that is but a hundred. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, I just like mean that it's like to, you'll, really you'll walk away. Agree. That's yeah. Mm. Sorry. You'll yeah, walk like away with something that, that is... satisfies you. <laughs> we keep starting at the same time. It's the delay. It's okay. I uh, I would say yeah, like that is, yeah, that's a good takeaway. You know, uh, people who look for AI art. Maybe um, it can be, we can figure out a way to redirect those people towards more substantive sources of art. Well, um, the only way we're going to do that is by recognizing that uh, the opponents of, of, of like free creativity and the opponents of, of actual beautiful art are waiting to scoop up those AI algorithms once they've been trained by all of us. And mark my fucking words, in the next five years, we will see that. We will see it gathered up. We will see these AIs if they haven't already been bought up by them. I don't know. I don't actually know the whether they're owned or not by like Palantir or by a Palantir subsidiary or by a Disney subsidiary. They might already be, but they're being trained up and the data is being gathered so that you can make a tool that will essentially allow them to make to not really make artists obsolete, but to but to choke out artists, to force uh, people who are finding a way to live outside of the gig economy, outside of the labor economy, uh, or outside of the traditional labor economy, to choke them out of that so they have to go back in, so that every person who currently makes their living off of art will only be able to do so if they are approved by Disney. And if they're not approved by Disney, then they don't get to make their living by art. They get to make their living working in the hamburger mines or working in the Uber Eats delivery mines or working in the Amazon uh, call center mines. That's that's the goal. The goal is ultimately I how to... it is right now, though. I agree. It's going to make it worse. Artists. And if you think it's and if you think it's bad now, like I said, don't don't act like I I would I would hope that that we wouldn't act like uh like a uh, niche art is a uh it makes it makes it safe because keep in mind that this already happened to all kinds of niche art. Art this happened to uh, this happened to rock and roll when when rock and roll was frowned upon then it became corporate people began to understand it and they made it legible and then well rock and roll became a mainstream thing this happens with every with basically every single art no matter how niche has found a way to become captured by the profit machine and so i don't think that like I don't think that furry art is safe. I don't think that kink art is necessarily safe. I think that what will happen is that uh, certain types of art will be invited in and promised large rewards, and then all unacceptable art within that subgenre will be choked out and left to die. And uh, then you will have. We're all this. Yeah. Sorry. Zootopia is hanging above all of our heads as we say this. I think. Um, yeah. But the thing is, is I mean, here's, so here's why furries are based. The more something gets corporate and put out by Disney and the more mainstream it gets, the more Rule 34 gets requested. Well, they that's be... true, but that's what they said about punks, too. And look at how punks are doing. Punks didn't make Rule 34, though. <laughs> uh, punks punks did worse than that punks punks were like we don't yeah. want our music to be accessible so we're gonna piss on the yeah. audience we're gonna vomit on the floor while our song is going and guess what the punks still got digested by the machine yeah uh wow talking about forcing punishing digesting i i think um this conversation has taken a turn uh yeah, it's gone but... into the vor it's gone into the vor department yeah, that means I think we need to end it here so we don't go for, yeah, go for the throat there. Giggity intentions, nas intentions nasty mentioned. But well, um, uh, it, it was great talking with you. Um, if you mm -hmm. please, please, once again, shout yourself out, tell people where they can follow you and, and see your amazing art. Uh, and hopefully, all of these, now that all of my chatters have been giga, giga uh, red pilled on the fact that AI art is, is to be resisted, uh, you will probably find that maybe this chat will be a fruitful environment for finding new commissions. 
now that they have been convinced of the fact that art is a, a human endeavor. Yep. Uh, so yeah, twitter.com slash rapty feathers. Rap, like word rap, and then T, but it's T I E feathers. That's the easiest way to find everything I work from from there. It's got links to my streaming place where the, the comic I color for, my fur affinity. Uh, there you go. I put it up on the I screen. Occasionally too. I occasionally shit post and um, retweet things like the insane. Uh, Demon Mama thing I made. Um, amazing. Oh, yeah, I could show them that. Hold on. Oh, God, that was freaking funny. Wait, the, the, you know, the, 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 the face. The, wait, the, the, the yinglet. Oh, yeah, the yinglet, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking yeah, of the I was, icon oh, I, I made, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, show, the, show. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Like, guys, just so you all know, the, the, cur the new sus emote, everybody right now in chat, everybody type sus in caps. S U S. Just type sus. Okay, that art was made by Rapti. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. See all that? See that sus? That sus was made by Rapti. Good job, Rapti. Like seriously, I shouted Thanks. you out on the first stream, but but just so everybody oh, knows, yeah, now you can put that. a voice to the face, to the sus. And then yes, also, and I was going to show the amazing. Uh, here, go ahead and and keep talking, and I'll bring up the uh, the Yinglet art here. Oh yes, which I'm going to. I swear, I'm going to actually send you out the mug and stuff. I've just you know i am things are, you know how things are uh but uh, i want to encourage chat so everybody in chat um do art be creative don't be made afraid to make icons do anything even if you feel like you don't have any skill or anything that, like that or you don't have the quote talent needed do it have fun um if you follow me on picardo which is linked through my Twitter, you can see when I stream, which is rarely. And I often will do discussions to help people who are interested in getting into art. I've got a lot of advice and a lot of encouragement that I can give people um, because I care. You know, I, I love basically everybody, and I think people should be able to have the ability and confidence to express themselves no matter how small. I think you're awesome, uh, Rapti. Um, well, thank and you. I'm glad we're awesome. able to discuss these these things uh, where we differ and where we agree. I think this was a interesting back and forth and I'm glad that I had it with you. Oh, me too. It was quite based. Um, I will uh, check you out later. All right. Have a, uh, have a, uh, a good night. Bye bye for now. Oh, you too. bye. All right, everybody. That was Rapti. By the way, I'm just going to show you again. This is the art that Rapti says where it says, Hi, 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 hi! So, so very lovely imps. How are things for you today? For this day, today. So much excitement for this stream. Such excites! That's that's me as a yinglet. This is me as a yinglet. If you don't know what a yinglet is, well, go enjoy. Okay. Yinglets are a creature from a really, really great comic called The Out of Placers. Um, we have a command for it. We're supposed to have a command for it. Um, but yeah. And no, an AI could not make that. Only Rapti could. Only Rapti could. Why is the Yinglet command not work? Oh no. Hold on. Let me. There it is. It worked. Oop. There it is. Check out Rapti's comic, The Out of Placers, at Valsalia.com. Go. It's queer rat bird things. It's really fucking good, okay? It's oop for Out of Placers. It's really, really good. It's a great comic. It's extremely cute. It's mildly, well, okay, I should say it's very horny, but not, like, explicitly not safe for work most of the time. Uh, like, it's really fucking good. I read it, I read the entire thing in two days because I got so addicted to it. It's PG-13, but, but there's a lot of love, and there's a lot of mild horniness. There's a lot of flirtiness, and there's a lot of lewd jokes. It's really good, though. Okay? Really fucking good.